they want to do the same in the county. It stops impulsive spending, and uh, they can. It's a nest egg. It's safe there, insured, and if they need it, they can get it, and it, it still earns them some interest. And they said, "Yeah, but that's not good enough. They got to get it out of there." And I said, "Just like the family farm, where the guy sells some eggs or some cream, and he takes that money and maybe bury it in the backyard, used to, but he's got that money as a nest egg, and nobody knows anything about it, and he can't write checks on it." But they don't understand that kind of program. But uh, they're really uh, coming out for the consumer. They say the consumer's got all these rights. I told them that consumer two-way sword. You've got to have a borrower, too. If you help one consumer make 15 16% on his money market certificates, you're going to kill this guy's borrowing money in the farm industry. And the farm, farmer banks, we hate this, the 15 16% money market interest. They keep saying you've got to compete with the money market mutual funds. We compete with them, but my God, the uh, farmers and ranchers will never, ever be able to compete by paying that. You've got the, far the, uh, the farmer that bar borrows the money, and you've got some people that loan the money to the bank. The lenders are making a pretty good deal now, but the borrowers are getting killed. But if you've got a locally owned bank in your community, encourage him to be politically active, I'd put it that way, along with the NFO people. I mean, you're politically active and tell your banker to get out of that chair once in a while and go to, go to work for, to keep his bank, too. Any other questions? I'm sorry it couldn't be more. Yes, sir. <laughs> Heard an economist say one time, if you give a number, don't give a date. If you give a date, don't give a number. <coughs> so, uh, I think the interest rates are going to come down for a, a few for a few more months because there's nobody doing anything in the in business in the business world. The unemployment is high, and uh, it takes a while to turn this big machine around, which is the United States production and manufacturing and building. It'll take a long time to turn it around, I believe. And when the people aren't borrowing money to actively do things, which is bad for the country, then I think interest rates will stay down because the government's is the only thing that'll put the interest rates up right now, and they're borrowing over 50, I think they're borrowing 53% of all funds available to borrow in this country, the United States government is. So you got a real competitor there for the money, but I think they're going to stay down for a little while, and then I think they'll each ease back up again. Like uh, maybe they'll come down for the next four, five, six months, and then I think they'll work back up a little higher, but I don't think they'll, uh, I'll cross my fingers, I don't think they're going to go as high as they were, I hope not. Actually, the banks, we made more money percentage-wise when we were making farm and, and cattle loans for 5 and 6 percent. And, you know, they say that the American uh, saver finance and uh, subsidize the farmers even at that because we could take that money. We're, we're paying 2 percent for savings and CDs. We loaned for 6 percent. We made 300 percent profit. So percentage-wise, we did a lot better at 6 percent loans than so did the farmer. We, we should be back there. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, when I was chairman of the, uh, the uh, Agriculture Rural America Committee for the Independent Bank Association of America, I was that chairman for a year and I served on it and I served on some other committees, but uh, made a deal with the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, a fellow named uh, John Grant, I believe. Anyway, we, we got together, this fellow in Chicago and I did, and uh, set up some seminars for bankers, bankers only. And uh, we have a commodity seminar twice a year, and we're looking at maybe three times a year for bankers, and it's the best attended seminar we've got. And it teaches bankers what the, what the mechanics of this thing is. They take us down to the trading floor, and they have a very, very good instructor. People, you know, these people with the seats on the exchange come in and talk to us about this for two days and then uh, send us home. But at least the bankers know what's going on and how the thing works. And uh, We've had some very, very good seminars, and, and as president of the Independent Bankers Association of America, I'm going to push for that program as much as I can, because I initiated when I was chairman of the Agriculture Committee, and I still think it's a good idea, because I've got customers out there that 
have feeder cattle, they have calves, they have wheat, and if they can hedge that and uh, see a profit, and I think that, you know, you can't go broke taking a profit. And I, I'm for you 100%. I think your concept is great. Yes, sir. The credibility of our sales. I think the credibility, uh, any, anything you do like that affects everything that, uh, anything you deal with. If I had a, a customer that lied to me about uh, anything, I'd suspect that he'd lie to me about everything maybe. And back out on a deal, you know, this one bank, the Wilmore State Bank that has said uh, here that I bought in 1970, I told some of my banker friends this, and none of them believe it. A fellow owned this bank in uh, Lawrence, Kansas, his family did, and he, he was absentee ownership, and I could see why it didn't make any money because nobody's interested in them thing. And it's 12 miles from us in the same county, and I knew all their customers. And he came out to the cold water one time and got a room in the motel, and, uh, and he called me up and said, I'd like to sell you a bank. And I went down and talked to him a little bit, and a uh, very nice young man. He told me why he'd take a percent of their uh, undivided profits and assets and all that stuff, you know. And I said, well, I believe we'll buy it. And we shook hands, and we didn't have an attorney there. We didn't have any contract. We didn't do anything. And he went back to Lawrence and said, I'll be back out in two weeks with all the stock. I can deliver it all because my family owns it. And you'll be here with a cashier's check, and we'll meet the bank and buy it. And that's all it was to it. You know, a handshake... We're still in the country sometimes where you can do a handshake and they'll take your word for it. But I think when the United States government starts backing out on deals like that, that uh, embargo, I think it hurts us, our credibility on everything. Yes, sir. I think it has a real impact because uh, uh, that's why a lot of these city banks will offer you all kinds of interest if you want to deposit some money with them because they've got a place to go. They loan a lot of money to Poland and Argentina and Mexico and, and uh, Brazil. Brazil's a good borrower. And uh, they get big interest rates promised. But uh, there's a law passed. I've, I've, I wish I had the article with me. There's a law passed in our country about uh, a year and a half or two years ago that as Abraham Lincoln said, the world will little note and will long remember what we do here. But I think the world will long remember this one because they stuck a deal into this bill that said that if a foreign country reneges on a loan, the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States will issue some bonds to this country. This country will issue bonds to our Federal Reserve Bank, like say Poland, out of money. They, issue, they can issue, say, $40 billion worth of bonds sell them to the Federal Reserve Bank of our country, which we own, and turn around and give the Poland the $40, million, $40 billion, and then Poland can pay off these American banks with it. But they still owe these, for these bonds, and the Federal Reserve Bank never collects for it. Uh, the taxpayers the rest are going to pay that loan off, and that's why they're so eager to do it. Uh, the reason that the United States hasn't dropped the hammer on Poland is because European bankers over there say that if you drop the hammer on Poland, which they've all got money in there too, we're going to give you back Argentina. And American bankers says, hell, don't do that because we don't want Argentina on our hands either. So they're all just kind of if iffy, everything around there. And I noticed the other day that the International Money Fund has made the American bankers that have loans in, the, in Mexico put up another $2 billion to help pay the interest and give them some fresh money. They say they're not going to let Mexico go down if it takes more loans from this country, but uh, 
they're trying to avert some kind of big tragedy, I think. But uh, I think it has a very, very direct effect on, on what interest rates you pay. Yes, sir. That's right. It is. It is. And uh, <coughs> sometimes you, if you get bigger than the government, well, like AT&T, they've been fighting AT&T for seven years. They finally came to some kind of agreement to split up their organization. But you let some of these banks get, get a toehold like that, and uh, uh, you'll subsidize plenty of deals like that, I'm sure, because they get bigger than the government. And the government can't afford to let them go broke either. The, the uh, FSLIC, the Savings and Loan Fund, you get a little short of money because a lot of savings and loans are going down, which is a terrible deal. And uh, now the Pratt and the Con over the uh, Comptroller Currency say that they might just put the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which insures banks, and the FSLIC together to stay out of the national treasury. They put them together, and therefore the ba banks can subsidize the savings and loan industry with their insurance. So they, they, they can do anything they want to, apparently, and they don't care. I think that after this administration gets out of power, gets out of, uh, out of office, I think that a lot of these people that are putting these programs together, like Conover, I'll tell you what uh, T.C. Conover told us in Hawaii uh, last March. He said, that I, we, had, we were talking about eight or ten of us visiting with him, seeing what's good for banks and, and trying to encourage him to kind of ease off on some of us. He said, I think that 100 banks in this country are plenty to take care of the commerce. 100 different ownerships of banks in this country are plenty. Well, if you divide that by 50 states, there'd be two banks to each state, and I'll bet Kentucky wouldn't even have one, and Kansas wouldn't have one. But he said 100 banks. I think he's got that down to about 10 now. These people are very, very smart. They're very, very, they're, well, they're, I'd say they're young. They're 35, 40, 45 years old. But they're very smart and they're very shrewd politicians, and uh, these ideas never go away, and they just keep keep boring in on you, and uh, they they might get it done. But he he thinks 100 banks plenty for this country, which scares me. Question way back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that that's the. Uh, the deregulation is a kind of a misnomer in a way. They're going to deregulate the banks and financial industry where uh, you can go into Sears Roebuck or Merrill Lynch or a place like that and they say, how about uh, selling your money market certificate today and $10,000? Well, I don't really want to do that. He's, well, how about selling your pair of shoes? You know, or how about a washing machine? And there's something about that that gets me down. Uh, I, I have a theory that uh, money as a commodity is different from a pair of shoes or a, or a set of tires for your car. There's a, there's a deal that I think that if you don't have confidence in the currency of your country, you can't even have a government. And I think that probably in the late 80s, we'll have a re-regulation going on to get some of this stuff straightened out again. I think they're making such a mess of it now that it's just going to be a hodgepodge and going to be a lot of financial industries go down, little, little banks will go broke, savings loans go broke, thrifts go broke, because they're all wanting to get in on the act. And it, uh, it isn't it didn't fair, but I think that you'll see a re-regulation of financial industry in the late 80s because they've got it, those pendulums swung too far. Yes, sir. How long is Mexico going to keep these funds frozen? I think uh, quite a while till they get their uh, economy straightened out. Uh, the, the United States is walking a pretty good tightrope with them and trying to be good friends with Latin America. And I think the United States won't pressure Mexico at all to get these funds turned loose for quite a while yet till Mexico gets back on its feet a little bit, which would be quite a while, I think, because they're in bad shape. The Mexican president, though, they say he's going to increase the export of oil 200, uh, 100, 100 million barrels a day. They're now exporting a million, a million and a half barrels. He's going to export two and a half million. They don't even start to have the facilities for it. And I don't know where they'd go with it anyway, because the oil market's in a, a glutted situation, just like some of the grain. They don't have any place to sell that oil. And, and OPEC countries are giving a little trouble there, but they don't have the facilities to keep up with a million uh, 
and a half barrels a day, and they say they're going to do two and a half million, and there's no way they're going to do that. But that's why, you know, the politicians can ease it off that way, so we'll make a lot more money for us, but they won't do it. Yeah, okay. thank, thank you very much. We're just about ready to, to wind it up. Uh, Don Mack uh, wanted me to tell you he's going to be outside of the door here, and he's got uh, a tape out there on sale that we've just had a tremendous amount of requests for, and it's one of the uh, it's the best of Here's Info Radio, and it's NFO Ford Contracts versus Hedging. Now, this is one that you can play to almost anybody and explains our position. So he'll be outside the door. We want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. And just remember, we got a big job on our hand this winter. we got to convince the whole United States that bargaining is more than marketing. God bless each and every one of you. <laughs>